everybody's not going to be happy for you. And when you come out of prison and you start doing well, you expect everybody to be happy for you because you, you finally got it together and doing the right thing. But that ain't always the case. You know what I'm saying? Because now that people don't have the shit to talk about, you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden you're, you're the enemy or the adversary now. And you know, jealousy and envy starts to set in. And all you're trying to do is the right thing. I was here about two or three years and I was in trouble here. Um, got a slap on the wrist, got out, back to the same old thing. And I'm consumed with this, this drug vice. Mind you, I'm from Chicago where we go 90 miles an hour and, it, and I'm in Bremerton where they go 20 miles an hour on school days when children are present. You know, so I had the advantage. It got to the point where I realized, well, well wait a minute. I, I am a lot smarter than this. I haven't always done this. Uh, you know, I, I got work skills and experience that I could be putting to better use. I'm tired of starting over. Um, so I think I had what, what you would call a paradigm shift. I applied to go back to barber school because I used to be a barber. I figured if I could, you know, open up me a barber shop, you know, I could develop me some consistency, start building a retirement for myself. Because now I'm 45, just getting out of prison. You know what I'm saying? Retirement is in the, on the horizon. You know, I got less years left than I had going into this thing. So I got to start thinking differently. And so I asked my girlfriend at that time, this lady who I had started seeing, if she would loan me $100 so I can give me a lawnmower and try to cut some, extra, some grass and make some extra money. Because I ain't fucking with no drugs no more. I'm too sharp for that. I ain't messing with no crack no more. About the end of the first semester of barber school, I'm rolling along and I'm doing well, but I'm getting a lot of business with lawn care. This shit's picking up. I'm building relationships. I'm cutting people hair on the side, so I'm making a few dollars in. Before I know it, I realize that I got to start a lawn care business because I got too many checks coming in that I'm going to different banks for. So I got to figure this thing out. At that point in my life, when I was starting to look at what was going on around me, I knew I had to develop a brand. I knew it had to have something to do with my hands because I'm looking at this thing and I'm analyzing, I'm saying, wait, I'm cutting hair and I'm cutting lawns and neither one of them are gonna stop growing. So what am I doing with these hands? I'm beautifying people and I'm beautifying people's property. You know, that's a blessing to folks. I'm being a blessing to folks every time I put my hands on them. You know, so we kind of tossed around some things and, you know, came up with hands of favor and, you know, so I take pride in that. Uh, and, and we're doing that, man. We, we're helping people. We're making an impact in, uh, within the criminal justice system and in the lives of people that are recently released. And I wanted to be able to help brothers that are still in those positions. So a lot of the things we talked about in council have to do with helping brothers and inspiring people that are still struggling from what I've been through and what I was able to, until this day, overcome. And that's that mindset, that criminal mentality mindset, overcome the, the ideology that drugs will um, make you feel good enough to get to the next moment, you know, when it's about opportunity, man. But we run out here and we're marginalized, you know, we're stigmatized, we're stereotyped, and it's difficult, man. Opportunities are hard to come by, especially those that are substantive. So what we want to do is offer them opportunities to people that's coming out or going through these struggles. But inclusion requires action. And a verb is different from verbiage. Bottom line is, and I've been advised not to speak on this, but the bottom line is this council, city government, or the police department do not reflect the makeup of its citizens, and we have to do better. You know, we have to do our part, man, to, uh, if nothing else, take the bullets out the gun from those who don't like to see a, an all black crew in their white neighborhood. We want their gaze to go from one of suspicion to one of amazement in a matter of 30 minutes to an hour. There's a scripture, the 23rd Psalms, and in that scripture it says, he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. But then I add an addendum to that, and he giving them a front row seat and letting them watch it.